said there was a thorn given to me. Now don't miss this. At this particular point in the passage, Paul was a Christian. He was saved. He was sold out. He was Holy Ghost filled. He had been with Jesus. He was spreading the message. So it was not that he was doing something wrong. The Bible indicates that God gave it to him to, in order to keep him humble. Y'all ain't gonna see that. And, and so the text says that when he, God gave him this thorn, God allowed Satan to come in his life. God allows things to come in our life in order to make us pray. Okay. See, some of us wouldn't pray as much as we do if God don't let some stuff happen to you. Some of y'all wouldn't call him as much as you do if God don't let you go through as much as you've been through. Matter of fact, there are about three of y'all in here that can say, Lord, I thank you for the burdens I had because it made me talk to you more. I thank you for the troubles I had. How many of y'all, come on, let's be honest, how many of y'all just this week prayed a little bit more than you prayed last week? Y'all ain't talking tonight. I mean, just, just this week alone, some of us had a long conversation with God. Can we just be honest tonight on our way to the door? How many y'all even said that three-letter word to the Lord, Lord, why? Y'all ain't talking. And you felt bad, but you knew that he was the only one that could answer your prayer. Yes. Right. The Bible says, watch this. And, and I want to reference this to Luke chapter 18. When you read it, when you get home, Luke chapter 18, verse 1, the Bible says something. That to this end, God spoke a parable. Jesus spoke a parable to them that men ought to always pray. Luke chapter 18, 1. That's how it starts off verse 2. And there was a widow in the land that had a problem with her adversary. And she went to a judge to avenge her of her adversary. Keep reading Luke chapter 18. The Bible says that when she went to the judge, the judge did not fear God, nor did he fear man. But he would not answer the widow no matter how many times she bothered him. The text goes on Luke chapter 18, if you keep reading, that this widow woman kept bothering him, and the more she bothered him, it seemingly irritated him to the point he finally answered. Okay, let me see if I can go in your room. How many of y'all got a child that you tell your child you're going to do something for, them, and then they keep coming back saying, when? Yeah. They said, Mama, you said. Daddy, you said. I thought you was going to do it. And they keep irritating you to the point that you get frustrated enough to go ahead and do it even before time for them to get what you promised them. Here's what Luke chapter 18, here's what Paul said about prayer. If you take it to God one time and don't nothing happen, go back again. If you take it two times, don't nothing happen, say, Lord, listen, I don't mean to trouble you, but this thing's still troubling me. Lord, I don't mean to bother you, but this thing's still bothering me. God, I say you can't take care of it, but since you told me you my daddy, I'm going to just talk to you about it. And I don't know about y'all, but the old folks said it this way. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your trouble. He'll hear your faintest cry. He'll answer by and by. You'll feel the prayer will turn in. You'll know the fire is burning. You'll find that just a little talk with him. Make yeah. everything all right. Paul says something in the text. I have a thorn in my flesh. I had something was bothering me. How many of y'all ever had something, someone that was bothering you, mm -hmm. and it seemed like the more you prayed about it, God just didn't do nothing about it. Oh, the text says, when you read the text, he said, I went to God's word thrice and three times mm -hmm. about the problem that persistently bothered me. I kept talking to God, and God seemed like he didn't hear me, but then after I kept going to God persistently in prayer, God gave me a predictor in my path. Mm. God told me what was going to happen based off of my prayer. Okay. See, here's where I shouted at. Because God never removed the problem, but he gave him something to deal with the problem. All right. All right. That indicated that God may not remove my problems, but he'll give me something to deal with the folk on my job. He'll give me something to deal with some kind of folk in the church. He'll give me something to deal with my heart issue, my mind issue. 
the text says, he says to Paul, my grace. Look at somebody and say grace. Grace. I'm out of here now. Because the Bible in theological terms throughout the historical context of the word describes two forms of grace. Number one, imparted grace. Number two, imputed grace. The particular type of grace that he's speaking of in this text is imparted grace. Imparted grace is the grace he gives you to make you righteous even in your wrong. Y'all ain't just yeah. shouted that. Yeah. I need about three people that know you did something wrong last week that can say thank God for grace. I, okay, okay, I got the wrong church. I thought y'all been a little bit more excited. I need some people that ain't too Holy Ghost here to say last month I thought something wrong. I went somewhere wrong. I didn't do what God told me. But grace kept me. Okay, let, let me let me show y'all. This is all I got tonight. I, I'm, I'm hastening out of here because when I begin to look at what he said, my grace is sufficient. The word sufficient means able to keep you. Sufficient means enough. Can you say enough? But then it also indicates more than enough. How does somebody say more than enough? Uh, and so watch this. Here it is. And I'm out. Uh, God painted the picture and a portrait in my mind to show me what it meant. God showed me a kickstand. Y'all know what that is, don't you? A kickstand is a small device at the bottom of a bicycle or a motorcycle that's when it's propped up, it holds the motorcycle or bicycle up. That represents grace. Grace is a kickstand. Say grace is a kickstand. You didn't shout off that, so let me paint it to you a little clearly. I begin to wonder, Deacon Pickett, how can such a small kid stand hold such a big motorcycle up? You ain't never thought about that. How does such a small little device hold such a bigger device up? Remember, grace is the kickstand. And God said, here it is, son, look at this. When you see the kickstand come out and go to the ground, the motorcycle leans on it. Okay, you didn't catch what I just said right there. I saw it again. He said, when you see the person get off the motorcycle, kick the kickstand out, they lean the motorcycle on the kickstand. Okay, y'all still ain't got it up to. I thought y'all were catching on the way out. Jesus told me to tell some of y'all what Helen Miller meant. He said, if you lean on him, he won't let you fall. And a few of y'all in here gonna have to learn that no matter what you go through, you got to learn how to lean on God's grace. Look at three people and say, I'm leaning on Jesus. Okay, all right, so let me show y'all another example because I lost five of y'all. Can y'all partner with a person real quickly? Just partner with a person real quickly. I'm out of here. Thank y'all for coming. Let's get ready to go. Let's go. Find you a partner real quickly. Now stand up with your partner. Let me show you the shining example of grace. Look at somebody and say, my name, Grace. And your name, Grace. Okay, now turn your back to them and they turn their back to you. And lean on them and say, I got your back. You just figured out what Grace do for you. That's how Grace responds to your difficulty. That's what we gonna have this week. We gonna have Grace. Because we can't take it by ourselves. We can't make it by ourselves. But how far our neighbor and say, but I'm leaning on Jesus. He won't let me fall. I cry, but I'm leaning on Jesus. says to Paul, it's sufficient yes. to the point that it'll keep you when you are insufficient. And I'm here to tell you, you're going to find yourself somehow, some way in your life being insufficient to hold yourself up. But you better lean on his grace. Let me go a little bit further. I'm through. Not only that, but I thank God grace never travels by itself. He brings mercy. Amen. Amen. That means the whipping we're supposed to get. Mm. Mercy made it a little bit lighter. Yeah. Some of y'all should have shot it because you know you should have got more than you got from the Lord for doing the stuff you did. Maybe look at me. I should have got whooped a little bit harder. But God's mercy held his hand back and gave me one more sunny day. So I thank God for his grace. And here's what the writer said. The writer simply said, Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I, found, I want to make it more personal because here's what the Bible said in Ephesians. We are saved by grace. 
that not of ourselves, lest any man might boast. It is the gift of God. Here it is. You and I are not here because of us. We are here because of grace. Won't you really bless God all over the building for his grace? Huh? I need to do that. I need 